Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Okay, a lot of things we see in EMS, guys, uh, kind of be pretty common, right? And I think TCA overdoses are one of those situations that we run into. Personally, a lot of the overdoses that I've seen, I've responded in the amount of time where I never really saw any major signs and symptoms. And I think a lot of us sort of experienced that, so I thought it was important and a good idea to sort of point out some of the things that you can see with this type of an overdose so that you don't get sort of complacent and think that these overdoses are not a danger to your patient. Think ahead with these guys because a lot of times this overdose is going to be comp combined with alcohol, which is going to be either enhancing the effects of the drug and enhancing uh, the signs and symptoms that you're going to be seeing, okay, complicating things for you. Now, what is it? Well, it's a tricyclic antidepressant, if you didn't know. Now, listen, guys, a lot of people, when they take this drug, they take the prescribed dosages, there's no harm being done, okay? Thousands of people take this drug, and it helps them live a, a normal life, okay? But it is a antidepressant, and sometimes people will take more than what they should, okay? Sometimes they'll take too many accidentally. Sometimes they'll take it and trying to commit suicide, so they can take it with alcohol, like I just mentioned, and these and can end up be some of the most lethal sort of overdoses and cause the most sort of cardiac events that you're going to see in an overdose. And you're going to look for a cardiac event going on with these types of patients, okay? It could be something simple like sinus tack. It could be torsades. It could even be VTAC or even AV blocks going on. Okay, so keep an eye out for arrhythmias with patients that you're suspecting in TCA overdose on. Even something like altered mental status. There could just be a decreasing level of consciousness. They could be totally unresponsive. Okay, look for altered mental status. Even things like excited delirium. Keep that in mind. Somebody who's presenting as excited delirium might be having a TCA overdose, especially if they have something like an MAO inhibitor on board as well. Guys, look out for seizures, okay? This is something that is an exacerbation of the overdose, okay? Um, something you have to think about there also. Dilated pupils, you might see, hypotensive patients, and respiratory failure, respiratory arrest, respiratory difficulties. Okay, check the SBO2, all right? Um, just the type of basic things here to look for when people might overdose on these drugs. Now, try to determine the time, guys, um, when the patient might have taken the drug, okay? Uh, it's not, might not always be accurate, okay? So you got to sort of take what they tell you with a grain of salt, right? Um, especially if they're taking alcohol. It might not be accurate, all right? But try to get some sort of a time frame because it will kind of give you an idea when you might start seeing some of the symptoms and the signs that I just mentioned on the patient. Usually, uh, when a patient overdoses on these drugs, you might start seeing the signs and symptoms that I mentioned about an hour and a half to two hours after they take the drug. Okay, so try to determine it. Of course, you know, you're going to have to assess your patient and treat accordingly, but uh, knowing the time... And knowing the onset might give you a little bit of a window and when you should start expecting to see something. What about about treatment? Well, of course, it's going to depend upon your protocols, but we are talking supportive airway, breathing, circulation, things like, you know, if they're hypotensive, you might be a, a fluid bolus, right? Um, you know, the airway, you might have to intubate these types of patients, okay? You might have to, you might have to put oxygen on them and... and, and and use a uh, big valve mask to, to help them breathe, okay? Supportive, do what you have to do to maintain those ABCs. A lot of protocols out there suggest using sodium bicarb, okay? Uh, average dose is one mil equivalent per kilogram, okay? Um, that's the most popular drug you're gonna use probably before most other drugs, including drugs for cardiac-related issues going on, 
okay, because some of the drugs you might give cardiac related things like VTAC or gamiodarone can actually make the condition worse and get that patient, uh, you know, into a cardiac arrest situation. Okay, so a lot of times sodium bicarb is going to be your first drug of choice, and a lot of times the bolus of that and followed with a, a drip, okay, and then your benzos, and this is primarily for things like the seizure issues that we talked about and maybe even the excited delirium to, uh, you know, get those drugs on board for that as well, okay. Guys, keep in mind, you know, this is the type of overdose, you, can, you might have a varying uh, you know, selection of signs and symptoms going on between airway issues, mental status issues, uh, cardiac arrhythmia issues, right? So, you know, keep all this in mind when you're assessing these patients and, and uh, deciding on your treatment path, okay? But again, most protocols do suggest that sodium bicarb and your ABCs are your initial interventions before other drugs uh, get on board, okay? And guys, follow your local guidelines, okay? This this drug, if you think about it, I know for myself personally, over the years, I've noticed that now there are specific protocols in place for this type of overdose, specifically because of what I just mentioned, that a lot of drugs you might use for certain cardiac events going on um, might not be appropriate if the patient's having these cardiac events secondary to this type of an overdose, okay? check and see what your protocol is for this overdose. If you're not sure or you haven't looked at it in a while, guys, go pull out your protocol book and make sure and brush up on it so you know. Okay, get a, give yourself a little refresher on what your protocols are for this type of an overdose. If you're not sure or the patient's not presenting uh, 100% for a TCA overdose or maybe something else is going on in there that you're not quite sure what's happening, Contact med control guys. Give them a call. Bounce off your, your findings, your signs and symptoms, what you're seeing, what you suspect is happening, and get some consultation and get some guidance on how to treat these patients, okay? Because they can go into cardiac arrest, and you want to try to avoid that from happening, of course, uh, at all costs. All right, guys? Um, guys, I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. Listen, this was a pretty quick one here. I didn't go too much into it. There's actually a lot of great articles online you can check out. Uh, for this with some real specific issues when it comes to the cardiac events um, and what's going on as far as how it's affecting the patient acidosis wise alkalosis wise okay good information to go check out guys um, do a google search you see a plethora of information out there on this topic but i hope this quick monday minutes gives you just a quick little peek in in window into this possible overdose what you should be looking for, and some of the common uh, treatments. Um, again, check your local protocols, guys. Brush up on it. Don't be, don't wait until it happens, right? Stay ahead of the curve. I'm a big fan of that, guys. You know, build your knowledge base and stay ahead of the curve. So when these patients present themselves, you're ready, and you can be the best EMS provider for that patient. Guys, until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours. Stay safe.